Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to my talk today uh, about uh, automating your workflows using GitHub Actions. So uh, uh, this is the agenda for today. So I'll be uh, giving a brief introduction. Then uh, I'll talk about what are GitHub Actions, then the type of action uh, jobs, creating your, how do you create your first workflow. And I'll show some examples. Then I'll talk about metrics build. Then uh, we can discuss about how can we run actions locally. And finally, I'll end with uh, uh, creating your own custom actions. So that's uh, uh, like all about today's talk. Okay, all right. So GitHub Actions became uh, generally available last year with the promise of a fast CI CD for any OIS language and cloud. So uh, the brief idea is uh, with GitHub Actions, uh, now you can create CI CD pipelines and you can automate how you build, test and deploy your projects on any platform, including Linux, Mac OS and Windows. And uh, it provides metrics builds. So it's like a, you can run multiple versions of your project in parallel. For example, you can uh, define a matrix like uh, uh, different, or you can choose between different operating systems like Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, or, or all together. Then your tests or your workflow will run in parallel on all these operating systems, which you defined in your matrix builds. And basically you can trigger these workflows on any events. So for example, uh, GitHub has various events like push, uh, when someone push your code to a branch or when someone creates a pull request like this, so you can specify when this workflow should get triggered and start running it. So what are GitHub Actions? So uh, GitHub Actions are individual tasks that you can combine to create jobs and customize your workflow. So before getting into uh, the definitions for GitHub Actions, uh, there are certain ter terminologies involved in that, uh, like um, an action, a workflow, a runner. So I'll uh, explain it. So actions are basically a uh, code or like or programs, which uh, uh, like is uh, readily available uh, by some developed by the community or the GitHub itself has published several actions. So that we have. Uh, Docker container based actions, JavaScript based actions, and scripts like, for example, you can run bash scripts to perform various tasks. So then we have a workflow. So this is actually the file where we describe how you have to perform a particular workflow. It includes various steps. For example, if you want to build your project, you have to perform various steps. You need to pull your code then compile it, test various actions. So everything you can specify step by step in this file. So this file is basically located in a folder named .github, uh, followed by workflow and a file with file name yml. And we have runner. Uh, currently, like we have a GitHub hosted runner and self hosted. So GitHub hosted runner is like uh, uh, they provide 2000 minutes of uh, free actions minute uh, for free for individual accounts. And if you need more, you can pay for GitHub. And these self-hosted runners are actually if you have uh, your own infrastructure for your data center. So you can download these runners into your machine and you can set up like run actions on your infrastructure. So this uh, constitutes uh, uh, like the basics of uh, GitHub actions. There are as I've uh, explained in the previous slide, different types of actions. So we have Docker container based actions. So it packages the environment with code and exec to execute a specific task. And we have uh, JavaScript based actions. It can run directly on a runner machine and executes faster than a Docker based action. So this is because uh, uh, Docker based Docker container based actions are basically Docker file. So you need to build the do Docker container from the Docker Docker file. So uh, when you add a container based action in your workflow, you have to wait for the startup for that container and uh, building that particular container from the image. And these JavaScript actions are basically uh, like Node.js developed on Node running on Node.js and uh, it's readily available to run and uh, 
Then the next type of action is uh, composite run steps. So uh, you can perform various commands. Like, uh, for example, if you want to run a bash script, you can specify run this, that command. So I'll show you this in more in the upcoming slides. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, these environments available as of now. So Ubuntu, Mac OS, and Windows, all these environments are available. So you can choose between when you run your workflow, you can choose which operating system should be used. Like for example, this is uh, the second column is showing the YAML label. So uh, once I show that uh, syntax of that file, then you will get a better idea. So it's about like you can choose, if you want to choose uh, uh, Ubuntu 18.04, you can specify the label like Ubuntu latest. Right now, uh, they provide Ubuntu 20.04 as well, but uh, it's in preview stage. And the, still the latest version is uh, 18.04. And also like you can choose between other operating systems available. And uh, the next thing is uh, jobs. So uh, a workflow run is made up of one or more jobs. So for example, like uh, I have shown in this image on the right side. So this is actually a, uh, like uh, uh, multiple jobs in order to perform a workflow. So I have uh, run test, create release, publish docs. So these are different kind of jobs. So if you further drill down into these jobs, these, these jobs contains again further steps. For example, to run your test, you have to check out your code, then you need to set up the particular environment. If it's a Java project, you have to set up JDK or any other programming language, you have to set up those and then uh, you need to run those tests. So uh, that way you can specify a job and uh, these are multiple jobs and these jobs constitute uh, a workflow. And uh, uh, jobs run in parallel by default, uh, but you can uh, make it run sequentially using a keyword called needs. For example, this create release job, uh, like if you want this job only to be run after running this, the first run test job successfully. So in the description of this particular job, you can specify it needs the, uh, this job. Like you can specify with the ID of that particular previous job. So the second one, wait for the completion of the first one. Like that, you can uh, add a dependency between various jobs. And uh, each job's run in an environment specified by runs on command. So as I shown in the previous uh, slide, so we have various environments available, like various operating systems. So you can choose which operating system uh, to run a particular job. And, all right. So uh, let's uh, look at uh, uh, how to create a simple workflow. So, all right, thank you. So all you need is to uh, click on this actions tab. So GitHub will automatically identify uh, based on the project. So right now my project is uh, Play Framework Scala project. So it automatically detect and suggest me set up this workflow Scala. So if you scroll down, you can see a different types of actions available in the GitHub marketplace. You can choose anyone based on your requirement or your project. Uh, so different languages are available. And also uh, there are uh, several different actions available like to automate various steps. So these are not specifically to building your project. You can automate various uh, events or various operations you perform on GitHub. For example, this greetings repo. So like you can set up this workflow. So when someone contributes uh, first uh, commit to your repo, you can greet with a particular predefined message. This stale Action is basically if you uh, your GitHub uh, repository has a lot of uh, pull requests or uh, issues which is not being uh, like made and not made any changes for a long time, then it automatically mark it as state. So there are different actions available in the marketplace. So you can choose between those. So what I'm going to do is I just need to set up this workflow. Let's click on that. So it automatically creates a sample. Uh, workflow YAML file and you can see uh, the name you can choose a name here uh, we can change the name in so I'm just going to use that name by default and you have 
two sections. Well, the first one is uh, like you are configuring the events basically. So when to trigger this action. So here I have uh, like two events. One is push and the second one is pull request. So it says that whenever someone push any changes to this particular branch, right now it's a main branch, you can change, give it any branch. If you have multiple branches, for example, I think it's yellow. So you can main, if you have one more branch, you can specify the other branch here. So any number of branches you can specify. So I'll go with the first one branch. And when someone creates a pull request to this particular branch, this job will trigger. Okay, and this is the next section, jobs, where we define various jobs. And this is the name of the particular job. So uh, for example, I can give it uh, a name. For example, we are going to give it test. And again, we can give an name as run unit test. And here, run zone. So which operating system this particular workflow particular job should run. So I'm going to choose the Ubuntu latest. You can choose Mac or Windows if based on your requirement. And these are the steps which we have to follow in order to like test this project. So here you can see users. So this is the particular keyword uh, to specify a particular action. So this is one action available in the marketplace. So on the right side, you can see uh, marketplace and documentation is readily available. So you can simply read this and get started. And here is a marketplace and see here I am using an action called checkout. You can search for checkout. See, this is the action which I am going to use in this particular section. So you can read the documentation how to do this. So this basically um, check out the code from your repository. And uh, so, yeah, then um, the next is like, I'm going to uh, install J JDK. So it's JDK 8, or if you, 11, you can specify it as 11. So for example, set up JDK 11. Uh, so this is basically, it uses one predefined action called setup Java. And uh, in marketplace, there are other actions also available, which uh, uh, you can choose. Uh, uh, multiple different types of uh, uh, JDK versions. Like this one, I think only it uh, uh, installs the Azul's SDK, JDK. So anyway, I'll go with this for now. And the next step is uh, run test. So here I can specify run. So run is basically, you can specify a set of commands. So here my, it's a Scala project. So I will do SPT test. So, or else like if you have multiple commands, you can add a pipe symbol here so that it will change it to a multi-line command. Then you can uh, type other command. If you have other commands, you can add it there as well. So for now I have only uh, one command. So I'll choose this. And uh, here you can see uh, it is located actually in GitHub workflows and uh, you can name uh, any given name. Uh, for example, I give it a CI uh, dot YAML. Then all you need is to start commit from here. You can add a commit message. So uh, it, you can choose between uh, like uh, create a new branch and uh, submit a pull request to that particular branch. So right now I'm directly committing to this branch with the default uh, message. So I just commit here and uh, so if I go back to actions, you can see it's started running. So if you click on this, so here you can see run unit test. So this is the name I gave to the job. Then you can see it, uh, check out the code. Yeah, it's done, it uh, set up JDK. So now it's running the test using SPT test command. So uh, you can see, so it uh, like basically emits uh, log, so useful logs. You can uh, check out, check this if uh, something goes wrong. So it's actually running the test right now. Yeah, I think for the first time, like it takes time to download the dependencies. 
and anyway let's see it won't take much time What do you mean right. uh, first time? Yep. If I can ask a question. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this is like uh, uh, this particular action is running on, like on a fresh machine. So when SBT, when you run SBT, uh, like it has to download all de uh, like dependencies. So basically if you want to reduce the time, you can cache these dependencies. Uh, like uh, uh, there is some actions called cache is available. So I'll show you that later so that uh, if uh, these dependencies are already uh, like available in your cache it will use that like that so uh, okay. yep it just did uh, run the test so everything went well and uh, like my first github action as creator so and you can see a like a green check mark yeah so uh, let's uh, uh, take a look at more um, complex workflow so I actually started working uh, with uh, github actions a few months back when uh, like me and Eric and Neil uh, Neil from France uh, started working on this Lunatex Scala 3 course so where we used uh, GitHub Actions to automate our workflow for that particular repository. And uh, actually for building that course, we were using a tool called course management tools. So uh, maybe I can first show you uh, the repository. So this is actually in Eric's repository account. So here we already have defined everything. So I have two different workflows, like one is the CI and publish docs. I'll just show you uh, so this is the ci pipeline basically which we have defined so in this we have uh, uh, two jobs one is run test and the second one is create a release so here as usual uh, like on so we've defined uh, when to trigger this workflow so whenever someone push to uh, this branch or when a new tag is created and we can also like ignore a particular path uh, so uh, you can use that in a different action i'll show that again and here we have uh, this action is being triggered on when someone creates a pull request to this branch and uh, yeah here is the first job so it runs on ubuntu and the steps is like we check out use the existing action called checkout so it just check out the particular source code then we set up uh, Java. So uh, here, this action will basically set up uh, Java. Uh, so here you can also see a keyword called width. So this is basically the way which you can provide inputs. So if that action is uh, uh, accepting, uh, like expecting some arguments, so you can specify those here. So for this uh, Java version is the argument which this particular action is expecting. So you can specify that particular argument. So here, yeah, this is where we performing caching. So yeah, uh, we have uh, this action called cache available and uh, uh, we can specify, scan this particular path here, IV to cache and the for SPT dot SPT. So we are, and we are creating a key for the cache. We need to create a key based on the files over if any new changes is happening then we uh, like this will automatically uh, fetch new dependencies or else if it's available it will uh, just use that and uh, so here we actually we were performing the test so in order to run the test we need to generate some test scripts so it's specifically to this particular project so we uh, instead of using any other actions we we can simply use the run command so you just this is one step so you can just give a name then run followed by multiple commands so you can see multiple commands which are we are performing so you can create the directory move to the directory then we are actually looping through the files in the directory then generating some test scripts 
And uh, once this step is done, then we are actually running the test. So we have the scripts available. So you can see it's again run. You can, so you can uh, like write multiple steps with combined with multiple run commands. So here uh, we are making the script executable. Then we just uh, run that script. So it will basically uh, test the entire uh, like uh, repositories, uh, uh, templates and all. And this is another uh, job called create release. So this tool, which we, then we decided to create uh, uh, binary artifacts. So when someone uh, creates a tag, uh, then only this event is basically get triggered. So that's what you can see here with an if statement like when the event name is push and it starts with uh, uh, the event rough is like this a rough stack so it's basically uh, detects if someone creates a new tag so that's how we create new releases so then only this act, this job will get executed so for that it has multiple steps which we follow uh, like uh, the previously uh, check out the code then set up uh, java we are performing some caching then uh we just uh, published it local so actually this isn't connected to or published to any uh, artifact reverse one type we were just uh, creating the jar and make it binary with the help of Corsair. Corsair is uh, actually this is a really nice tool so which uh, you can uh, create binary uh, ex standalone executables from your jar files so we this step you can see we uh, are like using the run command with the uh, curl to download this and install it into a particular location. And then we issue multiple commands to package this into binaries, these commands. So again, a name and run, this is actually important. So uh, you can give any number of commands. And uh, then we create a GitHub release and upload this assets, the zip files. Basically here you can see we are, yeah, we are generating these binaries. So we are uploading as assets so this is action this one action is readily available in the marketplace so uh, you can uh, use it to create a release so for that it expects some environment like github token so uh, you can specify the secrets token so github uh, like if you look at the settings of this but if you have administrative privileges uh, you can set up the secrets in the settings of this particular repo and you can read that value here and uh, uh, these are basically the inputs uh, which this particular action is expecting so that we uh, provide this and it will create the release and once it gets created so now we need to upload this assets to the release so this is another action so here you can see it uses so this is the name of that particular action and followed by the version so this is why like if you search on the marketplace you will get this and here the upload url you can see uh, steps dot create release so actually uh, in order to upload a asset to a release so this particular step is producing an output so the output of this uh, action is a url to where you have to upload your uh, release assets so you can use that so this action has an id i have given so by referencing that id you can get the output.upload URL from the previous steps so that this particular asset is being uploaded as a zip file. So uh, you can go, if you can, if you go back to the releases section. So this is the release actually, uh, which is created using GitHub Actions. So GitHub released, GitHub Actions released this. So this release is being created by GitHub Actions. And uh, so, yeah, this asset zip file is uploaded. Again, it's uploaded by the action. So this is uh, one workflow. And uh, one more, uh, if you look at the, so workflows, we have one more workflow called publish docs. So for this particular tool, we have set up a documentation site. So uh, this documentation site is built using mdoc and uh, docosaurus. So, uh, all it requires is uh, you need to set up JDK. Then it needs 
Node.js to build uh, uh, the HTML files. It's actually like uh, from markdowns, it will create a documentation site. And this is the command actually you need to perform to publish. So uh, like uh, SPT, uh, we are using some SPT plugin. So SPT will take care of everything. So you just issue that command. So uh, the idea is uh, like here you, create a job and multiple steps, then name of that particular step and users, you can specify the name of that action. And uh, run is the way, as I already told, uh, you can issue multiple commands. So, so this, maybe I can show you the documentation website. So, so this is uh, Docosera's documentation site, which got uh, generated by that particular action. And uh, this is basically hosted in GitHub uh, pages. So you can see GH pages, a branch called GH pages available for this repo. So that action will build all HTML files and the, it will put that particular X, all HTML files inside this branch GH pages. So GitHub will automatically host it for you under your GitHub username.github.io so that uh, uh, like, so this is the way which we used uh, GitHub Actions in this particular project. And uh, similarly, like we also used Actions uh, in one more project, and that's the Lonatex Scala 3 course. So you can see in the releases section, so actually we do a release with every uh, Doty versions and uh, we have uploaded the course artifacts. So this is actually the student SIP. So students can download this SIP and do start doing their exercise by following uh, the readme provided in that each exercises. And this is another form called linearized repo. Anyway, we have documented it in the repo. So uh, I'll show you how we used uh, uh, GitHub actions here. Again, it will be located in .github slash workflows and you can uh, give any name. So this is the uh, YAML file. And here also like we create one when performing, uh, when to trigger this action, this section will describe that. And uh, yeah, so uh, it check out the course and this one here you can see, uh, I'm actually using another a custom action which I developed to uh, download the course management tools binary artifact and to install it. So I will show you how uh, like I build this uh, GitHub action. So this is actually uh, my own uh, GitHub action available on the marketplace. So it uh, like uh, it has some inputs, it's expecting some inputs like the repository from which repo and the tag. So the particular version you can specify and the file name you can specify, then the output path you can specify to where you have to download this file. Then followed by this, uh, you can run commands like this. So uh, I created uh, this uh, action basically in order to learn how in how to do this. So yeah, that's all about uh, like it, this step. And uh, again, we are following the similar steps like uh, set up the uh, Java, then the caching, then yeah, generate the test kit. We run various tests. Then this is another job. So it uh, is because basically uh, triggered when someone creates a new tag, when we then we release the uh, artifacts. So uh, here also like uh, as I show in the previous uh, uh, repo, similar way we are doing caching. So this is actually, yeah, these are the two important steps like where we generate the artifacts. So in order to generate these artifacts, we issue some commands. And uh, yeah, so we create the release, then upload the assets. So if you click on these actions, you can see uh, one action. So these are various actions which uh, uh, got run. So this is latest one big like validate course. You can see various steps. So you can see various steps in that particular CI pipeline. It got run. And uh, so here you can see this action is not performed. So it just run validate course because it's a normal uh, pull request merging. So this uh, create release action will get triggered only when 
uh, we have defined in such a way that, where that when someone creates a new tag. So you can see here, uh, if you scroll down, so here we created one tag. So in this, you can see it run the, valid the course validation and then it run this job as well. So all these steps were involved in order to publish the artifact using GitHub Actions. So uh, that's uh, all about like how uh, we have used Actions uh, like to define some workflows. And yeah, anyone has any questions? Just uh, uh, I can ask. I think I can continue. Yeah, uh, anyone, yeah. You showed that there is validate stage and there is also release stage, right? And the, is release stage used for a deployment? Yeah, we can, you can use that for deployment basically. So in our case, it's uh, like we just generate the artifacts and we uh, wanted to upload it to uh, the uh, release section of that particular repository. Maybe you can use it for deployment. Uh, there are several actions are available, readily available. For example, you can connect with some uh, services on AWS or Azure. So uh, like it's readily available in the marketplace. Or if you want to run some script, so you can uh, execute those scripts. So you, that way you can perform your deployment. So yep, you can do that basically. Yeah, and is it possible to do some approval process like a manual judgment on release? So for example, if i not sure if I want to deploy to this environment automatically or I, I want to still that someone approves it. Yes, it so yeah, actually um, I'll show you. Uh, we have uh, uh, configured this so uh, in such a way that uh, GitHub in your, uh, I don't have uh, permissions to this repo. Anyway, in the settings, there is an option called uh, branch protection. So uh, I'll show the pull request. So these are some pull requests which we created on this repo. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, maybe, yep. So we have uh, uh, configured in such a way that minimum number of approvals. So if, uh, if uh, one person has to uh, like, if, yeah, in order to merge this particular peer, someone has to approve this peer. So that thing you can configure in the settings like called the branch protection and uh, it will wait for so uh, like uh, uh, the wait for the approval mm -hmm. and also uh, here you can see uh, the checks the status checks like uh, you can also uh, specify in order to merge this particular feature uh, the status checks has to pass so here you can see it passed then only i can merge this so if it fails it, uh, github will automatically block so that thing you can configure in uh, the your branch protection so uh, if in our case, if uh, the main branch, if the code is get merged into the main branch, so it's ready to deploy. So it will uh, trigger the deployment so that you can uh, do this approval in that way, basically. Okay, yeah, I see. Thank you. So uh, the next is uh, a matrix build. So uh, this is uh, like, uh, uh, I took this screenshot from the documentation of uh, uh, GitHub Actions. So you can see uh, this is uh, like a job where it's performing tests with multiple steps. And uh, the important part is this section, strategy metrics. So you can specify a list of operating systems. Here, this particular workflow is running on Ubuntu latest, Windows, and Mac OS. So the idea is it will run uh, this particular action in par and parallelly on all these uh, defined operating systems and on these defined versions. So here you can see, uh, for example, this one is a JavaScript project. So it set up Node.js, then it uses setup node and with the version matrix dot not version. So for each uh, parallel executions, it set up uh, node 8, 10, and 12, and on all these machines in parallel, so that uh, if your project or your application is expecting to be 
uh, executed on multiple or expected to build on multiple variants or multiple operating systems so that you can make use of this matrix build so that uh, you can check uh, your project on multiple operating systems. So this is one good feature uh, which actions provide. And uh, yeah, can we run actions locally? So uh, basically uh, everyone uh, like run actions. Uh, so uh, if you build one, like if you are uh, writing an action, for example, writing an action means uh, you have to write the YAML file in GitHub workflows, uh, the file name with YAML extension. So uh, like you uh, write, make some changes, then you have to commit the code and uh, you have to wait get, uh, it to run it on GitHub. So uh, you can also, uh, like I found this uh, tool uh, with some, so you can install this tool so that you can test your actions locally, uh, like for the development purpose, actually, when you uh, start writing your action. Uh, so it has this handy commands, basically act uh, minus L. So at least all available actions. Maybe I can show you quickly. Uh, So, yeah. Yeah, so for this repo, I have already GitHub Actions configured. So I, maybe if I go to go GitHub workflows, I have two uh, different action, uh, workflows defined. So I have installed this tool minus L, Oops. I think we can uh, only see yep. your uh, presentation, so not. Yep. Oh, okay. I'm actually sharing a wrong screen. So anyway, uh, the idea is uh, you can issue these commands. So to list all available um, jobs, then you can run this uh, command act to run uh, a particular action, and you can also like, uh, like create like. Uh, emulate an event, for example, how your action will behave on this particular event, for example, act space pull request or push, you can specify that. So uh, this uh, tool, what it does is uh, it pulls it uh, various uh, Docker containers. So it will uh, create Docker containers uh, for your actions. And so you can run it in, in your local machine. So, and next is, I think, yeah creating your own actions. So as uh, we have, uh, I have uh, in the starting of this presentation, I have explained, we have various types of actions, Docker based and uh, JavaScript based actions. So uh, this is just a hello world example, which I took from the documentation. So in order to create a Docker container based action, all you needed to is to create a Docker file. In the Docker file, you can specify entry point. So entry point is the place where you can uh, specify a script. So uh, like whenever a container starts, it will uh, run that particular script. Then you can uh, write your action in that particular script or yeah. So you can package your any uh, custom logic into a, a Docker container. The idea is uh, you have to, uh, when you run this container, it has to start a particular task and then you need to create an action metadata file. So this action metadata file is basically describing uh, your GitHub action. So I'll show you. This is basically uh, action.yml. So you can give a name to your action, then a description, then the inputs. So inputs and output. So uh, these are basically uh, when someone uses this action, so uh, they will choose the name of this action, then input like we have seen a command called with. So these are the input fields, uh, like you can specify a number of input fields. You can specify whether it's a required field uh, with a default value. And also you can specify outputs. Uh, once the actions get complete, and once the execution of this particular action is completed, you can emit some output. So you can, uh, describe that here. And this section is actually uh, like uh, telling uh, 
how this particular action is being run. So uh, GitHub Actions uh, uh, environment will take care of this. So Docker and the image is Docker file. So this is just for the purpose of uh, creating a Docker container based GitHub Action. And this is the most commonly used uh, uh, way actually uh, creating a JavaScript action. So if you want to build your own action, so as we have seen in the marketplace, there are a lot of actions available. And if you want to uh, create your own custom logic in, in order to perform a particular step of your workflow, so you can easily get started with these uh, templates. So GitHub Actions team has provided these uh, templates. So a JavaScript action, a TypeScript action, for example, uh, yeah. So you can simply use this template and it will create a repo for you using that template. And you can see that uh, various scripts are being run when this action is being built. And uh, the important thing is this file, actions.yml. So this is where you define uh, the metadata for your action. So what are the inputs? So if once you build your action and you published it and some other user wants to use your action, then what are the inputs they have to provide and how it get run. So uh, runs, for example, runs using Node, uh, Node version 12 and uh, what's the starting point. So here they are specifying like this slash index.js. So uh, you, you have to come in, like check in the index.js files after building as well. So Maybe I can quickly show you one action I have created uh, in order to learn this uh, GitHub. Yeah. So yeah, this maybe, uh, yeah, this is actually uh, a simple action which I created using this TypeScript template. So here I have all my source then I have some simple unit tests. Then, yeah, here, if you look at the actions, so these are the inputs I am expecting from the user of this particular action. So the user can provide a repository, uh, the, like you can specify it's a true, whether it's the latest version or not. So the, I, the, like uh, this particular action was created in order to download uh, release assets from some repository. So you, you can specify, hey, download this particular version of that particular file from that and uh, place it into uh, this place. Uh, maybe you can even write a shell script or also to do that. But uh, if you want to do it in like uh, someone who has a no the knowledge of that, you can easily use this. So you can specify just download the tarball or the zip board. These are basically when someone creates a release on GitHub. So it will create a tar.js or zip files. Like if you want to download that file, just specify it here. Then the output file path, uh, the, you can give a relative path under GitHub workspace. Yeah, this is one variable which I uh, like wanted to uh, mention. So uh, when you, uh, are working on a GitHub actions. So GitHub has several environment variables readily available. So GitHub workspace is uh, such a variable. So this is the root folder where actually your uh, action is being performed. So for example, if you want to download some file and place it here, you can choose uh, use this variable uh, on, in order to find the directory and the path like that. And this field I've given if someone wants to download a release from a private repo, so you can specify the token. And the idea is like, uh, I've implemented is like using uh, the GitHub API. So GitHub API, uh, using the GitHub yeah, API, I've def defined it. And uh, uh, so, so what I do is uh, I'll run npm run all. So it will uh, lin run build. And then there is a pack command called npm run pack. So pack is basically ncc build. So it will uh, uh, compile your uh, TypeScript. So this is specifically for TypeScript project. It will compile all your TypeScripts into a single JavaScript file and it will be placed in your destination folder. And 
you need to uh, before uh, yeah you need to check in that into the git repo so so that uh, when someone start using this action it's actually referencing this file so and uh, in order to publish it to marketplace all you need it need to do is just uh, perform a release like uh, in uh, releases there is draft a new release you can click on that create a new release or the idea is it will create a new tag so i have one tag uh, i mentioned it or else like uh, uh, the documentation is suggesting you can create a release branch create a separate branch for release and uh, github uh, marketplace will so but if it's like by default it's an action so it will it has already detected it as a action so it will get published to the marketplace so you can view it on the marketplace like this so this is how it looks like in the marketplace so the readme file get rendered here so it shows if you have multiple versions it shows the version so you can just use this action like uh, you can just copy uh, yeah like this use in your project and so i have used it in our lunatech scala course this particular action and this icon so uh, if you look again at the actions.yaml so before publishing there is a section called branding so you can specify the download uh, or the name of an icon so here i have given so like by default they're supporting call icons from further icons so if you browse this you get a lot of icons so you can choose between various icon then you can choose a color so so that uh, yeah it will be rendered when you publish your action to the marketplace and also for javascript uh, based actions uh, github uh, has provided certain toolkits so if you look at this uh, so actions toolkits uh, these are basically npm packages action core exec so if you want to ex execute some uh, like os specific commands you can use this and uh, if you want to perform like io operations like create folder um, copy move files remove all these operations like you can use this library so a lot of libraries are already readily available by the uh, github actions team actually so where if you start writing if you know some javascript or typescript you can simply go to this uh, like uh, templates repository and get start using the action all right so uh that wraps uh, uh, my talk uh, today about uh, uh, how you can use github actions in order to automate your uh, workflow so if you have any questions just ask me and thank you for listening thanks robin yeah. when you publish to the marketplace do you get to, through some approval process uh no you can simply publish it to marketplace it's like uh, you just create a release and it will be automatically visible in the marketplace yeah uh, approval in the sense yeah maybe they have certain criteria defined like uh, uh, maybe uh, yeah i don't remember the link anyway it's like uh, you sh the, it will perform some checks like you should have a readme so a proper readme file then uh, you should have some this uh, branding uh, section which i show you in the uh, action yaml like the icon and the color you have to define that so github uh, will check that so if all those are like uh, are available then yeah it will publish to the marketplace i have a question um yep. Slightly off topic. So, why did you use Coursier for releasing uh, course management tools? Uh, so, we wanted to uh, create uh, binary artifacts, uh, and uh, Coursier, uh, uh, like, is uh, like felt like a very uh, easier way to package your jar files and. Uh, uh, you can create OS like uh, platform specific 
uh, binaries. So uh, like uh, you can just, uh, uh, yeah, it will create the launcher for you and uh, you just need to copy it and download it into your system. Once it's created, uh, you can just start using it like uh, regular CLI applications. So uh, this course management tool is basically a CLI application. So uh, we uh, choose that for that purpose. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's like acting, uh, actually this course here is very uh, like easier for us to create this particular uh, binary artifact. Yeah, it was it was promoted by Chris Kursier in uh, one of the tech talks, obviously. And then there was uh, an ex-colleague, uh, uh, one of my ex-colleagues at Lightbend, uh, suggested that um, you know standalone commands binaries would be handy. And then uh, he suggested using Kursier, and then he even uh, outlined how it worked, and then we started uh, implementing it. Yeah, that's the that's how it went. But it, it's actually a big improvement because now we have the four commands uh, that make up the the CLI or course management tools. We have them on our path, and we don't have to go through the course management tools, startup, SBT, have all the extra, um, usually not very interesting output that uh, SBT generates when loading and when running the commands. So. It's actually pretty neat now. Does that answer your question, Jan? Yeah, for sure. Cool, thanks. Uh, you, you mentioned that it's possible to uh, use uh, GitHub Actions to deploy, for example, on AWS or like on some, maybe some EC2 instances. Uh, how does it handle uh, credentials? to other system of, for example, I don't know, like Kubernetes yep. or maybe from SSH. Yeah. Git, GitHub has uh, uh, a feature called uh, uh, secrets. So uh, maybe I can uh, quickly show in my personal uh, repo. Yeah, because the repos are, um, I, 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 I think Robin doesn't have permissions to, sh to dig yeah, into. I, maybe I'll show in my own. Uh, yeah. uh, so, so here in the settings, if you look at, there is a section called secrets. So here you can create a secret. So some name and value, if it's a key, you can place your key here. And in your actions, you can specify secrets dot the name of this particular key so that you can access that particular key. And so uh, uh, in one of the actions, which we use to publish the documentations to GitHub, uh, uh, not this one, yeah, this one. So here we have this particular workflow to publish the docs. Actually, it needed a deploy key. So this is actually uh, another service by GitHub uh, called GitHub Pages. So it needs a deployment key in order to deploy your uh, like HTML files. So what we did is we created the deploy key with this, that this is the name. So as I show you here, so the name and the value is which we, like in the secrets we've provi provided that. So in your actions, you can actually specify this dollar symbol followed by double curly bracket. Inside that you can access your secrets, secrets dot that particular key. So you can manage keys in secrets like this. Yeah. 